Well, could you help me place this call? Oh, hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel. So thanks. It used to be that it was Moon Man that stirred the controversy pot regarding stealing other brands designs. The Moon Man P135 and M1000 were the latest culprits where the designs of Mont Blanc were being appropriated. I must say I enjoy these little controversies as my viewership goes up exponentially, as do the number of thumbs down I get and the number of filtered out rude comments. It's exhilarating, isn't it? I love the smell of napalm in the morning. But now we have another well-known Chinese brand flexing its design copy muscles in Jin Hao. This is the Jin Hao 9056, which I reviewed just last Wednesday. It is a lovely wooden pen with a really cool clothespin clip and a nice big shape and section. Thanks to viewers' comments, I was alerted to the fact that this Jin Hao 9056 might be a copy of the Conklin All-American. You can see that right over here over my left shoulder. But wait a tick. Wait a tick. Which came first, China or the Yank? Some viewers were skeptical that the Conklin All-American might not be as All-American as it claims. In fact, it might be totally Jin Hao minus the branding. Does that mean Conklin are made in China? Oh no, God! All of that is just a preface to today's pen review, and that is this Jin Hao 85. This gets even more curiouser and curiouser as the Jin Hao 85 has been released well before the pen it is cloning, the new and much anticipated reissue of the classic Parker 51. Parker announced the reissue of the Parker 51 about a year ago and it's been delayed by the pandemic but is expected to be released next month. But wait, please stand by, we're getting breaking news. I filmed the review you're about to see yesterday, but this morning Yoast Applebaum posted a video announcing the new Parker 51 reissue fountain pens in steel and gold nibs are now available for sale on his website. If you're interested in shopping at Applebaum, don't forget to use the coupon code FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D, as you check out to get a 10% discount. But today we're going to look at the comparison between this Jin Hao 85 and this now released reissue Parker 51 and determine if they are in fact one and the same fountain pen. I'm also going to do an experiment on this pen in a new segment I'm calling Don't Do This at Home. Seriously, don't do this at home because you'll break the pen. Right now. <laughs> open this one up. shouldn't call these unboxings anymore. I'll call them unbaggings. We have two pens. The first one here is a new model Jin Hao. It's the Jin Hao 85. Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! Again? Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! <laughs> Ooh, don't know my own strength. It has a really interesting uh, gold cap, gold colored cap that says Jin Hao across there. And this is screw, not pull. There you go. And it has a hooded nib. Now, I'm not fond of hooded nibs, but I was interested that maybe one of my bobby nibs, my bent nibs, might fit on there. But I've run into a problem. That hood does not come off. So, I asked a friend over in the Fountain Pen Network who is very knowledgeable about uh, Chinese pens how you get this hood off. And apparently it's similar to the Hero 100 hood that is also glued on. And you have to take this section off like this and put it in some boiling water. And you heat it to the point where it softens that glue and then you can get that that hood assembly off of there. So that's what I'm going to do. 
and we'll see whether I'm actually destroying this nib or not. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Before we get into the parts and features of this pen, I do want to do two things. One, I want to give you my speculation on what is going on with this pen. And two, I want to show you the experiment I mentioned in the unboxing, which failed. This will be how I took one for the Inquiring Minds team and damaged this pen beyond repair. First, let's talk about the Parker 51. I happen to be very lucky in that I have this 1954 Parker 51 Aerometric Fountain Pen on semi-permanent loan from my best friend and fountain pen inspiration, Ron. This is a gorgeous three-piece Parker 51 set from 1954 that I refurbished for Ron last year. It belonged to his late father, Dennis, a wonderful man I was privileged to know and call a friend. You can see my video on this pen, pencil, and fountain pen set right up here and I talk about the history of the 51 in that video as well. The Parker 51 is arguably one of the most famous fountain pens in history. Parker manufactured the 51 for an incredible 31 years from 1941 through 1972. Along with the Parker Dual Fold and the Schaefer Balance, the Parker 51 is one of the most imitated and copied pens of all time. Let's look at some of the clone models that I have in my possession, and there are more than just this. Hero was one of the first companies to clone the Parker 51 with their Hero 100. Now, I don't have one of those Hero 100s, as they are fairly expensive, but here is the Hero 616, which is fairly close. There is some fascinating history about the Parker Hero collaboration back in the late 1970s and how the Hero 100 was the outcome of those collaborations. And then we have the Jinhao 51A. Only this one is the open nib version and not the hooded nib version, which is more common. And my personal favorite, the Wingsung 601. Uh, this one is the Flighter model, which has an upgraded stainless steel uh, hooded section. And this one is also a piston pump vacuumatic style fountain pen, whereas the Hero we just looked at is the old style Aerometric, which is very similar to the original Parker. And here is another uh, Hero clone. This is the 612. It's sort of a slimmer version uh, with an end finial. You can see how much slimmer it is than the original. And then there are some other clones like this Wingsung 618, which is a piston filler and a screw cap, but the same hooded style nib and Parker Arrow style clip. And here's another one of my 618s, piston filler in the transparent body. So you can see the piston, again, a screw cap, and that hooded section. And there are many more clones out there. With all these Chinese clones, one of the questions that have been raised year after year in forums like the Fountain Pen Network is, with all these Chinese clones of the 51 out there, why isn't Parker China making a Chinese 51? Well, that's a good question. There's no doubt Parker has an OEM manufacturer making Chinese Parker pens. A lot of Parker's current production is made in Shanghai since 2010. The Jotter, the Urban, the Vector, and the IM among them. Let's see what other pen manufacturer is in Shanghai. Hmm, what might it be? Who could it be? Who could it be? I just can't imagine who. Could it be? Jinhao, maybe? I guess Parker heard the chatter because last year they announced the reissue of the Parker 51, quote, for the modern era. This isn't a recreation of the Parker 51, far from it. It is a cartridge converter with a semi-hooded nib and a screw cap. And it's very similar, kind of like this Jinhao 85. Kind of a lot like this Jinhao 85. So, which came first, 
the China or the Yank? And why is this Jinhao 85 on the market months before the Parker and at a price point that is 10 times lower? And this is something I found interesting. Mech4i, the longtime veteran of the fountain pen network and aficionado of all things Chinese pen related, posted these images on the FPN in November 2019. He said, Parker China had the pages taken down already, but the leak is out. First photo shows text saying, new generation Parker 51. Second photo shows comparing to original P51. The last photo shown steel cap with steel nibs and gold plated cap with an 18 karat gold nib. Not much info, but looks like a Chinese market only model and is rumored to be made not by Parker themselves, but a long time local partner. Brackets, guess we know who. So that was from the Fountain Pen Network back in November 2019. About a year ago, they officially announced the release of the uh, reissue Parker 51, which looks very similar to this. And then they announced it was being delayed because of the pandemic and have since said it's going to be released in February. So just a couple of weeks from now. And my take is that the you know who that Mech4i is talking about is Jin Hao. And perhaps we can add Jin Hao to the Conklin you know who list as well. All American indeed. Now on to the failed experiment. Because if I show you the pen now, you'll just recoil in horror at the mutilation. If I had known the nib was not removable in this pen, I would have passed on it. I'm not fond of the nibs that are in any of these Parker clones, including the Parker itself. They are stiff and uninteresting. You'll note that the clones that I've inked, uh, all three of these pens have that Bobby Bent nib that I replaced uh, from the stock nib. And I use this Wingsung 601 Flighter every day now. I had assumed that the hood on the Jinhao 85 was removable. It might have been built similar to the Hero 100 or the 616 and the original Parker 51 and had been glued on. But the hoods on those pens can be removed by putting the pen hood in hot water until the glue softens. So that's what I did. Here is a time lapse. Okay, so now we're boiling. I'm going to put the timer on for eight minutes to heat that adhesive up inside there. And put this on a hot pad because it's going to be hot. And here is the result after about a half an hour of fighting with it. A shrunken section that shows precisely where the hood is permanently, permanently glued in place. So do not do this at home. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. This hood is not designed to be removed. I have no idea about the Parker reissue due out in a couple of weeks, but at $85 US for the steel nib version, I wouldn't want to try, nor am I going to buy one. As to this pen, I didn't ink it before I experimented with it, so take the writing samples you're going to see for what they are. Uh, I might have damaged this pen beyond repair. Let's look at the Jinhao next to the actual Parker 51 for a moment. So you can see the major differences at a glance are the Jinhao has a screw threaded cap. It has a semi-hooded nib rather than the fully hooded nib of the Parker. 
and the Jinhao has a lack of proper deep posting like the original Parker 51 does, which is one of history's best posting fountain pens. There are minor differences in barrel and hood size and shape. And another major difference after unscrewing the barrel is that the Jinhao is a cartridge converter, whereas the original Parker 51 was, of course, an aerometric. And now on to the Jinhao 85. From the top, we see a gold metal jewel finial, which holds the Jinhao Parker clone arrow clip. The 51's clip was of its era, of course, but let's see the clip on the new reissue. I only have a photo, of course, but you can see that the fletching on the arrow is quite a bit different on the Parker reissue than it is here on this Jinhao. The clip is nicely springy and usable. The cap is fluted with very finely done flute channels and gives the cap a substantial and well-made feel. Get a close-up of those flute channels for you. The cap tapers up quickly and then is straight until we get to the cap band. The band is wide gold metal with two grooves setting off the cross-hatched block letters of Jin Hao, and there is no model number. There's a small step down to the barrel, which is straight until almost the end when it begins to taper towards the rounded end. This might not be an obvious difference between the Jin Hao and the original Parker, but this pen here is metal and this one is plastic resin. That metal adds to the weight of the pen, giving it an overall weight of about 25 grams versus the 21 grams of the original Parker 51. The cap unscrews with one, two and a half turns, a bit much if you ask me, to reveal a shriveled and shrunken black plastic hooded section and a horrifically chewed up and mangled gold band and cap threads. And here is the semi-hooded, extra fine steel nib. Let's compare it with the original 51. See how much further out that Jin Hao extends from the hood, where the Parker doesn't. Everything else looks very similar. And this Parker on the right is a fine 14 karat gold nib. The section unscrews to reveal more mangled threads at the end of that section. And of course you see a Jinhao branded standard international cartridge. Inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner and integrated threads and a brass Phillips head screw holding on the cap finial. The cap posts, but not very deeply and not securely at all. Uh, and it also back weights that pen quite severely. These are all big drawbacks for a Parker 51 clone. I mean, Jinhao already makes a pretty good Parker 51 clone in the Jinhao 51A. What niche is this pen trying to fill? Maybe it's that people who hate all of the features of the one of the most famous and beloved pens in history have been pining away for the last 48 years for someone to make these improvements to the Parker 51. And yes, I'm aware that Parker did do a reissue of the 51 back in 2002. But people want a screw cap with a semi-hooded, non-removable nib, a cartridge converter, and a pen that doesn't post well? Well, I just don't get it. I 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 don't get it. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough in the hand to write with and is nicely balanced. But of course, posted, it is not. This pen retails for $9.48 US, and at this price, I don't mind mutilating it to find out if the nib can be swapped. I can always buy another. So now, let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Jin Hao 85. And here it is with a Parker 51, a Hero 616, a Wing Sung 618, and a Wing Sung 601 flighter. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, and you should note that the original Parker 51 right here, the closest match to it is this Hero 616. You notice that the Hero 616 actually posts even deeper than the uh, Parker 51. It also should be noted that this Hero 616 
is so inexpensive you can get packs of 10 of these for $15 on eBay. And now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Jinhao 85 and it has a extra fine steel hooded nib and the ink today is Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. Let's check the wetness. This pen is decently wet, but as you can see, I'm having some issues with it. So now I'll just repeat my caveat here. This pen is borked. <laughs> I boiled it and applied vice grips on it until the section has shrunk like my Thanksgiving Day blue jeans. Dog only knows what has happened to the ink collector inside this hood. It could be shrunken and twisted in there like a politician's soul. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to be political. Okay. It could be shrunken and twisted in there like a clergyman's soul. Oh, sorry, none of that either. I apologize. Apologize. All right, all right, I apologize. You're really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. It could be shrunken and twisted in there like a hedge fund manager's soul. That's more like it. The nib is thin and a little bit scratchy. And as to line variation, well, dream on. Hey, Tyler, take a pause for the cause. Ah, uh, sorry, man. Thank you and good night. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes in at 0.3 millimeters, which is a Western extra extra fine and a Japanese extra fine to fine. And for our quote, And as to reverse writing, it is just as scratchy and thin and uncomfortable as plain writing and some quick writing. Seems to be working okay now. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? After reviewing some really nice Jinhao pens lately, the Jin 0956 and especially the Jinhao Centennial, this Jinhao is disappointing. It is almost like some other company designed it for Jinhao to build it for them. It's a shame that this other company sought to abandon what made the original writing instrument such a success. The sleek design, the hooded nib, the deeply satisfying slip cap posting, the balance of all of that pen together, it's just a shame. And for $10, I still don't want a replacement of this pen. The nib is fixed and unremovable, as we saw. 
and it is only available in this thin, very boring line. I'm not interested in owning a pen like this, especially when a Wingsung 601 is available fairly inexpensively with a huge variety of options. You can get a lot of different finishes with the Wingsung 601 in demonstrators, in different colors of plastic. Uh, you can have a hooded or a tubular nib. You can swap out section hoods for different colors and even stainless steel. You can replace the nibs with a variety of options, including these marvelous uh, Bobby Bent nibs. And you can have gold caps, steel caps, barrels with ink windows. Perhaps there is a market for this Jin Hao at 10 bucks. Perhaps only to try it out to see if you want to spend $85 US for a genuine Chinese Parker or even $250 US for a 14 karat gold nib. But 10 bucks is all I'm going to venture for this inquiring mind. I'm not that fond of the original Parker 51 as a writer uh, to want to invest over $200 on a reissue that dispenses with all of the compelling features of the original. Well, that's my $2.57 worth anyway. If Parker wants to change my mind, they can send me one of the new ones for review. I promise not to boil it or crush it with vice grips. Honest. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.